welcome to our ninth grade parent information night. If you were here with us last night, it's going to be a lot of similar information, but there's going to be some helpful information for incoming ninth graders as well. So if you are here, if you're in a Zoom meeting right now um, about Ashland High School, what to expect for the 2021 school year, specifically for our ninth graders, you are in the right place. If you're not here for a meeting like that, go ahead and exit the meeting. Um, we're gonna get started here. Um, I'm really impressed that everybody um, has stayed muted, entered muted and stayed muted. We're gonna um, ask you that you stay muted and there will be time for questions at the end if we do not get to them. But let's start things off by first just welcoming and introducing ourselves. All right, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Ben Bell. I'm the new principal here at Ashland High School and uh, happy to see uh, such a good turnout tonight. And Be Becca Leroy is not with us tonight. She's participating in some district interviews. Um, she's part of an interview committee, so she's not here tonight, but some of you, um, may recognize her name and face. She was with the high school on a part-time basis last year and she was also the district EDI coordinator. Um, I, my name is Rebecca Garmati. I'm the assistant principal here at Ashland High. I am I'm, new to the high school this year, but I've been in the district for a long time, but I am new to the Grizzly team. I am old. Uh, my name is Glenna Stiles. I'm the Dean of Students. I've been around a long time and I'm looking forward to getting to know all of your students and you over the course of the next few years. I'm all, I, I am almost as old as Glenna. Um, I, I am going in, I'm Carl Kemper, the Athletics and Activities Director, uh, actually going into my 17th year at Ashland High School and uh, but still young at heart and have my hair on fire to serve kids every single day. Okay, there's some other people with us today. So I just get started then? The, I mean, I'm the first listed here. Hi, I'm Carrie Phipps and I'm the ninth grade counselor. And I am Diane Berry, and I work with kids with last names A through H E, 10th through 12th. Hi, hey, everyone. Oh, okay. okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Brianna Trevino. Um, I work with 10th through 12th grade as well, last name H E to N. And this is my first year with Ashland. Hi, and I'm Maurice Montero, counselor for O through Z and grades 10 through 12. And I just moved here from Southern Nevada and I'm loving it. It's a great place to be, great staff. Okay, thank you everybody. Um, so like I was saying about the, the, you're staying muted, but do feel free to use the chat feature. If you have a question, you may want to just take notes by hand and then wait until the end of the presentation because we might answer um, questions that you may have right now at this point. Um, but if we haven't, please use that chat feature. And also um, a lot of us are monitoring that chat and we'll be addressing common themes at the end that come up from that. All right, Ben's gonna walk us through what we should expect this first quarter. That's right. So uh, I'm sure everybody knows at this point, we are uh, at least for this first quarter in what's called comprehensive distance learning, uh, which just means that all of our classes this year are gonna happen virtually um, instead of on campus. So um, you should have received that communication weeks ago. And in anticipation of that, uh, we know that, you know, it's, it's not an ideal situation where our, our teachers are um, really skilled at, at in-person instruction. That's where they make that magic happen. Um, and we know that students look forward to that. And so we had to make some adjustments for um, what our bell schedule was gonna look like in, in this environment, and what our master schedule was gonna look like. So typically um, we're an eight period high school. Uh, and so we kind of felt like the, the challenge, especially for ninth graders, because typically they're the ones that are gonna get scheduled with eight classes, um, that might be a lot to manage for, for students at home. 
So we focused on providing uh, quality over quantity of classes and really giving our, our teachers a chance to dig in and get really good at distance learning because it's a new thing for all of us. And also kind of reduce the load a little bit on students to make it more manageable for them and give them the, the biggest chance of uh, success for this year. So that is our schedule. We'll show you what the actual bell schedule looks like uh, a few slides down. Um, we will have tech support available. We've got an amazing tech department here in our district. Uh, they have ordered a, a lot more devices for this year for families that, that have a need for that. Um, there'll be some information coming out about that uh, if you haven't gotten that already. Um, and the district has also purchased a, um, a new learning system called Canvas that all of our teachers' classes are going to be housed in. If you were in our district last year, you probably had some experience with, um, with Teams. And there were some strong points to Teams, but also some other things about it that just didn't make it uh, a great fit for a, a learning management system. Canvas is going to make everything a lot more smooth, and our teachers are getting trained in that now, these uh, first two weeks before instruction actually begins. Um, and along with that, they're learning how to not only use Canvas, the technical side of it, uh, but they're also learning how to kind of convert their lessons into a distance learning format uh, as opposed to, you know, what they would typically be doing in the classroom because it's a little bit different approach. Um, students will have availability or, uh, I'm sorry, students will have access to their teachers every day through uh, scheduled office hours. So that's going to be a time where um, Students can log into their teacher's Canvas class. They can click a, a Zoom link that says office hours during that time. And if they've got general questions, need some uh, help or guidance, their teacher is gonna be there and um, available to provide that for them. We've also built in some uh, social and emotional supports uh, within our schedule as well, um, because it's a tough time. It's, it's kind of stressful out there for everybody. Um, people are anxious. Uh, our students, I know, want to be here on campus and interact with their friends and get to meet their teachers in person. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that we built in some, some ways to support them through that. So um, I'll let our, our counselors and our dean Glenna, uh, talk a little more about that. Carrie, do you want to go ahead and talk a little bit about yeah. that for ninth graders? Yeah, sorry, I had to unmute myself. I forgot about that. Um, but what we do know is when students feel safe, when they feel heard, when they feel connected, they do have more academic success. And so social emotional learning is really about, and we're all in different stages of it, where we learn to understand and uh, manage our emotions, we're setting and achieving goals, we're uh, establishing and maintaining, you know, really positive uh, relationships, and we show and we feel uh, empathy towards others, and um, you know, so it, so social emotional learning is a really important element um, to also uh, support academic success because it helps them make uh, good decisions later on. And you want to add to that, Diane? Well, I think, do you want to talk, um, I know that Glenna will talk a little bit about advisory, but just- Oh, well, I can talk about, is that, are we going to, yeah. So advisory, um, that's a place where we're going to get, where hopefully, you know, can really address social emotional learning directly. Um, the ninth graders, as you know, were supposed to take a Grizz advisory class this year. Uh, we've been calling it Grizz, uh, Grizz Academy, but we're going to change it to Grizz Advisory this year. But what's really exciting is that the school decided to offer advisory to all students at Ashland High School next uh, this year. So, so um, advisory is the place where we're going to be teaching them uh, school success skills, such as time management, note taking, using the library, uh, growth mindset, and, um, and getting to know who they are. And, and what they're good at, which is also the career and college readiness or the exploration um, skills and, and uh, ideas and, and dreams that they will have. The exciting thing about uh, advisory for ninth grade is it's gonna be really small classes. Most of the classes don't have more than 17 students in it. 
so that teachers can really be checking in with the with the student. Sorry, the teachers can be checking in with the students um, in a more personal and relaxed way because they you know they don't have a whole lot of students to get through in a short period of time. But they'll be looking at their academics and checking in with them and asking them if they need support or how they you know can, do they need access to the counselor or to the road community health or is there something else that we can do to support our student? Do they need um, a new, uh, you know, some, some materials or um, access to the library. So anyway, it's gonna be a, a really positive experience, I think, for all students this year. I'm excited. Great. Lena? Lena always has something to add. Yeah, I'm sure I do. Um, the other thing that's exciting about advisory is that we are launching it um, for 9, 10, and 11th graders. And those advisors that the kids get placed with will move through their high school career with them. Um, so that person um, will become, um, you know, somebody who really knows the kids' hopes, dreams, and aspirations. The conferencing will be done um, through that individual with input from all their other academic teachers. Um, and there's, um, you know, just a whole lot of, of opportunity that comes along um, with this program. Um, I, I, Diane and I and Carrie are going to be working with the teachers to provide the, um, the curriculum and hopefully, um, you know, it can really engage the kids and make them feel like it's someplace that they belong, that they can um, ask questions, that they can reach out for help. Um, and as Diane just showed, we are going to do that once a week for an hour um, during the Wednesday schedule, which we're going to show you in a couple slides. Um, the kids will get a partial credit for that that will add up to a full credit by the time they're seniors. Um, and of course, it will be pass fail. There will be, um, I, I mean, very few assignments of anything. It's more just engaging the students and um, giving them an opportunity to be to be seen and heard and um, taken care of a little bit. I wanted to jump in and just add one quick point. Um, in terms of kind of that social emotional learning that we, we really wanna support, I, I wanted to just address this social emotional piece around Zoom time and um, students being live with their cameras. I think that we've heard um, loud and clear that a lot of our students are feeling um, a, a fair amount of anxiety and self-consciousness, which is again, not unusual at this time of life around being live um, with their video camera on. And I really wanna reassure everybody and ask parents and guardians out there to reassure their students that um, they don't have to be um, on a live camera. We want them there, we want them present, um, but they can post um, an appropriate photo um, or just be there in name. We want them, we want them present with us, but we certainly don't want uh, worries or concerns um, about how they look that morning or that day to get in the way of them being with us. Great, thank you for that clarification, Diane. Got lots of great specific information. Um, so some other common questions we're getting is, you know, will there be any in-person learning? Um, and at this time, we know in this first quarter we, is what we can talk to and speak to. We don't know about after November 6th, um, more details will come out. Is, um, we move through this. Um, so right now we have the ability um, for limited in-person instruction. So we're assessing that and figuring that out. Um, we are, we, that will not happen until the end of September. We need to figure out what that would look like, how we would structure that. It would be very um, small groups of students that are on special plans um, or kids coming in one at a time for maybe summative or formative assessments that we're not able to do via distance um, or maybe some science labs. But again, that would, the soonest that would start would be end of September. Carl, another big one we get is, will there be any sports or clubs? Carl, you're muted. Dang, this, 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 new, this Zoom world, and I've, had, I've been to a thousand Zoom meetings and still just those little glitches. Um, 
So um, I was telling you how awesome you all are for um, investing this time to support your kids. You know, it's, it's, it's certainly not an ideal situation where we're at, but we're, we are completely committed to making it as positive a situation as possible. Um, I live with uh, three teenagers, an eighth grader, an 11th grader, and a 12th grader in the National School District. So I get the challenges um, firsthand um, of what, what we're trying to uh, navigate and try to uh, accomplish for kids. You know, one question that's, and I'm going to have to duck out because I have a, five, a 530 meeting, uh, I'm double booked, but uh, before I get to the activities and uh, athletics question, logistics, lots of people are like, you know, how am I going to get my yearbook? How am I going to get my math book, how I get this, that, the other, we are going to set up, um, we're trying to minimize and go, as, because one of the things I'm working with is logistics, and we're trying to minimize uh, kids coming to meet the necessity for kids to come to campus as much as possible, so um, we're trying to go as paperless as possible, but that, that's not um, entirely possible, so uh, we will, uh, the second week of school we're shooting for, get out word of for kind of a drive-through opportunity for anything that's necessary for your kid to physically get. Um, so, but with athletics and activities, uh, the Oregon School Activities Association, which is the governing body for athletics uh, in the state of Oregon, has bumped all seasons into 2021 at this point. And um, what that looks like is typically we would have a 12-week fall sports season 12-week winter sports season and a 12-week spring sports season in a 36-week school year. Um, right now, the schedule's set up for three seven-week seasons starting in January and actually starting with winter sports in March and January and February uh, going into, and this is a, the big um, paradigm shift for people who are used to what we're used to, uh, fall sports um, like football, soccer, cross-country, volleyball, water polo, typical fall sports going um, in um, March and April, and then uh, spring sports in, in May and June, and extending into the summer. So, you know, we're really hopeful that that's actually gonna happen. Um, one thing we've learned with um, COVID is uh, the only thing consistent is change in the information that we get. So we are going to um, do our best, um, you know, to create opportunities for kids. Hopefully, we're hoping to get, uh, put together we're working on actually my other meeting is actually with coaches tonight uh, we're working on putting together a plan for potentially doing in-person activities sooner than later um but we don't know i can't tell you at this time like if or when that's going to happen um i also oversee activities uh speech and debate is we're planning on speech and debate happening um they've got i mean it really lends itself well to a um virtual model and that is there are plans on the table for virtual uh, speech and debate competitions this year um, our performing arts programs be drama and um, uh, band orchestra or choir are working on ways they can actually put together uh, extracurricular virtual activities and performances um, you know and we do and we have a very uh, vibrant historically a you know, vibrant um, club culture at Ashton High School in that we have like over a hundred student cl student led clubs at any given time. And, you know, a kid can, or I, I'm your go-to for that, but it can, you know, if your son or daughter, uh, your, your child wants to start a club, all they really need is um, another kid with a, a passion for the same interest and an adult to supervise it. Um, I would say there's a group of seniors right now that three years ago came to Ashton High School and said they wanted to start an uh, um, uh, ultimate frisbee club as ninth graders, and they um, we now we I support we supported that, and we now have a thriving um, virtual uh, uh, our uh, ultimate frisbee club with 25 ish uh, consistent members. Um, you know, so um, we do want to try to we're working on ways to create virtual clubs and. Um, or to make virtual clubs happen and we just you know because we know how important the connection and activity and uh the passion sometimes outside the classroom are important to kids um and you know and, uh, like robotics we have a thriving robotics program traditionally and so all of these things we're going to try to figure out how we can do them as best we can do them 
virtually until we can do them in person. So anyway, um, one thing to know is that for athletics, uh, you do need to register um, on family ID, which is if, you're, if, you're, if your child did, uh, did sports at the middle school, it's the exact same registration program and you would already have an account. Um, you probably forgot your password as I do every year, but there's the forgot password option. Um, so you should go in and register them for any sports that, you, that they're planning to do this year. Um, I did put the, the link is on our website in the very first thing in the chat room. Um, if you go to that, I put the link to uh, registration for athletics. So, um, you know, it's always a great day to be a Grizzly. Um, and um, we're going to try to, uh, we, we make that decision every day at Ashton High School. And we're going to do our best to make it as great as possible under the circumstances with the kids uh, for this year. So. All right, great. Oh, yeah. Carl, we know you got to run. Thank you so much for filling us in. Yep, happy to do it. Okay, um, so a couple other common ones we're hearing from parents. Will attendance be taken? And yes, um, absolutely. Attendance, uh, students are expected to attend the synchronous. You'll hear us use that language a lot. Synchronous means the live, um, real time part of the, that the teacher is offering class. Um, so that's really the best way to fully engage and get the most out of the learning. Um, so that is definitely expected and they'll be marked, you know, uh, present when they're attending that session of class. But if they're not able to attend, um, there is the asynchronous. So that is the not the live, but maybe the teacher is posting videos of what happened in the class today, where they're posting assignments, where they're posting a rubric of a writing activity they went over. So those are the asynchronous pieces that the students still will be able to access via the teacher's Canvas page to be able to engage in the class. The important piece to be able to mark for attendance for that is that the student parents need to reach out to the teacher and have a communication about the missed class. I wasn't able to attend the synchronous live teaching today. Um, I, I accessed the assignments. I watched your video. I'm working on the assignment tonight. That there, and then the teacher responds, okay, great. I, you know, do you have any questions about the assignment? That there's an actual engagement um, about the missed work. Um, as long as that happens, your student is marked present for attendance. Um, and then if there, if there starts to be attendance issues, if we start to see a pattern, um, you know, three or four missed days um, or some chronic tardies that students are entering live sessions late on a regular basis, we do have a process that we're calling our engage team that will be reaching out to students and families to try to figure out what's going on and how we can help remove any barriers to get students engaged as, as best they can. Another big one, will there be grades? So absolutely, we heard a lot of feedback specifically from parents um, about grades and not appreciating the pass no mark option that we gave for the spring. So we are absolutely um, giving grades. There is a lot of a little more flexibility that the state's allowing with that, that there um, are ample opportunities to redo and make up and complete work and show progress um, without being penalized. Um, so we know it will be a challenging time for some families to be able to keep up on things. So there will be some flexibility, but there will still be grades. So this is the typical bell format that parents and students are uh, used to seeing. So we just wanted to show that little preview for you. And that's what has been in our grizzogram. That's what I am told, I am new to the grizzly community, but that is what is parents and students are used to seeing. But what this equates to is a typical day would look like we're really encouraging families to try to create a sense of normalcy and what the routine usually would look like. Um, we are pushing back when kids actually are expected to start and be in their first period class till 930, but still having that expectation that they're up before that, that they have breakfast, that they've got their workstation set up, that they're ready for the day. So they're ready to go at 930. So they're logging into that first period class via uh, Canvas, and they're participating in that live synchronous teaching. Um, ben will talk a little bit of the next slide about what that 85 minute block will look like. We are not expecting it to be 100% lecture for 85 minutes with kids staring at a screen. Um, the kids will have a little bit of break there and then log into their second period class. Again, participate in the same 
synchronous piece um, and maybe some off screen time and then there's a lunch and then wrapping up the day with the third period class and then having access to teachers office hours. Office hour hours are for general questions and support. Um, there'll be other times in the weekly schedule that kids can get help with real specific um, teacher led activities, teacher directed activities, but office hour is definitely a chance to check in, especially if your students missed um, the first period or second period or third period um, due to a variety of reasons that they can check in with the teacher during office hours. Hey, I missed class today. What do I need to work on? What's the top priority? I'll be there, you know, the next red day or the next white day. So an opportunity to touch base with teachers about general questions, general check in. So Ben's going to talk a little bit about what that 85 minute block time will look like for kids. Sorry about that. I was muted that time. Uh, so our 85 minute blocks um, are going to be pretty familiar for our, our other, our, our returning high school students because we're traditionally on block periods. Um, but the, the state has given some pretty specific guidelines about how the instructional time should be uh, divided. So within 85 minutes, basically at least half of that time needs to be teacher facilitated, which could be like a, a, a teacher leading a Zoom class, similar to the way we're leading this presentation with um, all of you. Um, and then the other part of that is what's called applied learning. And that is just where the, the students are taking what they've learned and now they're going to apply it to um, an activity or a lesson or a project. Maybe there's a, a group discussion that's going to happen. And so they're working on that. Uh, the teacher is still available if students have questions or need some help and guidance. And um, our teachers are, are getting trained in what that's going to look like. And so what a lot of our teachers are doing, kind of the approach they're taking is at the start of the um, block period, let's say, you know, our first one starts at 930 each day. Students would be uh, tuning in, clicking on that Zoom link through Canvas, uh, starting the class session, the teacher's going to have a, you know, a check in with everybody. Hey, how, how, how's everyone doing? And then kind of leading everyone through what the learning expectations are and um, you know, maybe some direct instruction. Maybe that takes about 15 minutes or so, and then students are doing something maybe a little independent from that, maybe some a quick write or another assignment, and then the teacher gathers everyone back together again. So they're trying to kind of break up the activities within that 85 minutes, so it's not a long stretch of time where students are just staring at that Zoom screen being talked to. Um, trying to make a lot of effort in terms of making it uh, as varied and engaging as possible. Great. Had to check and make sure I wasn't muted. So Wednesday's a little different. Um, again, really encouraging students still to wake up and get ready for their day so they're ready to go join that advisory class that uh, Carrie and Glenna and Diane went into a little more detail on. Um, really, uh, Carrie explained how that's really small size for ninth graders and really tailored to ninth graders and, and learning the ropes of, of being here on the, at, at being in a high school environment and all that that can entail. Um, attendance is required um, and they will be getting a small amount of credit for taking advisory. So it is expected for that they attend and participate in that. Um, and then they'll have an hour that they are able to access their teachers for office hours. Again, checking in, I missed class yesterday, or I know I'm going to be out of town the next couple days. What are the assignments? Um, again, general questions and, you know, touching base with the teacher. And then they have a lunch. And then the last almost two hours of the day is for applied learning time. Um, so this is more for specific work on, on work that the teacher has assigned in classes. So maybe they're going to dive into um, a literature circle more. The teacher is going to set up, oh, I want this little literature circle to come to applied learning time and I'll help you, you know, guide you through it and I'm here for help, you know, and then let those students engage in that process and this teacher's available to answer questions and help them dive deeper. 
So helping them dive deeper into their teacher directed assignments that they're getting in class. So um, there's a wide variety um, of how teachers are going to use that and what they're going to be using it for. It's going to be a great time for science teachers to be able to uh, dive deeper in with their lab work and help students specifically with some specific questions that might come out of their lab work. Um, that's another area that I can think that this would be a really great time that teachers are available for that deeper dive with students. Sorry, I've lost my presentation. Um, Glenna, sorry, as I have work out the technical difficulties, anything coming up here in chat that? Um, yeah, people are still asking about books and when that's going to happen. Um, a question about, um, you know, is the meeting going to be available and is the chat going to be captured and also about that applied learning time and what happens if two teachers want the same student at the same time. Okay, so yes to all of that. This is being recorded and posting. I will capture the chat as well. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're teasing things out like that with teachers on how they're going to schedule that. That's going to clearly take some communication between between teachers and and who they're asking to to attend that applied learning time so that's kind of a work in progress and will be more specific based on teachers and and students in that class um, and we'll, we'll help them figure out to navigate that so a student isn't asked to attend five different applied learning sessions because that wouldn't make sense um all right ben you want to take them through what will look like on a their first day yeah, so um, our first day is Tuesday, uh, September 8th. So by Monday night, hopefully, um, you and, and your child are going to know how to log on to Canvas. So uh, the details about how that's going to happen, we've got a few different ways we're going to share out that communication. Uh, I think probably the, the best and what I anticipate to be the most helpful will be um, on the night of September 2nd from seven to eight, there's gonna be a, um, a guided kind of lesson for parents and students and community members about uh, Canvas, how to access it. Um, we have some teachers who are our Canvas super users who are gonna help uh, lead everybody through that. If you can't make it at that time, it's not a problem. We're gonna record it and that will be posted as recording uh, on the website so you can catch it later on as well. Um, but if you don't want to sit through an hour long zoom video, uh, we are also going to be uh, sending out as a district some uh, kind of very clear step by step directions on um, how to actually access it, log in and, and do all that. Um, our plans for the first two days, uh, the 8th and the 9th, they're uh, evolving a little bit. Uh, they are going to be half days. and so. Uh, it will start at 9.30, instruction will end at 12.30. Um, and the reason why we are, are still working through that is because we wanna make sure that we're making it as clear as possible uh, for our students to be able to access everything that they need and that our teachers are well prepared to do that. So um, there'll be more information to come on that, looking at an upcoming Grizzogram for the um, kind of the schedule for days one and two on the eighth and ninth. But it's going to rely, uh, those days are half, half days because we're really going to focus on helping students navigate through uh, initially with Canvas and making sure that they know how to access assignments, knowing, making sure that they know how to submit assignments and, you know, find different courses within Canvas. Um, we definitely don't want Canvas to be any kind of barrier to student success. So the, the beginning part of the year, the beginning part of opening week is going to be really educating students uh, on that. And then beyond that, um, we're asking teachers to go a little slower with content for the first two weeks, just in general. Uh, we know that a lot of this is new technology. These are new processes. Everything's new. Um, some things will come up probably that we need to troubleshoot and problem solve. So we are um, letting teachers know that, you know, really focus on building relationships with our students, making sure that uh, all of the, the classroom norms and expectations are taught really, really clearly. Um, there will be content taught during the, the first two weeks. 
And as, as everyone gets more uh, acquainted and accustomed to the process, then the pace is gonna pick up a little more from there. All right, great, thank you for that. And so last, um, Glenna and people that have been monitoring the chat, you can again tell me of common themes. And if we haven't specifically addressed your question, um, you may unmute yourself and ask us. And again, just a reminder, we really try to put out the gr Grizzogram on Fridays and really make that the one-stop shop for updated information. So always check that at some point on Friday. <laughs> After I'd also um, like to make a, an announcement, if I can. Um, last year, uh, for the last couple years, I've been meeting with parents and having parent coffees and you know, um, distributing information and, and talking about uh, it, whatever comes up, you know, Grizz, like the Grizz advisory, what lessons they're learning. And, and it, it's been a really positive experience. And, and when school ended in March, um, we went ahead and had another meeting, uh, a Zoom meeting, and it was well attended and the parents seemed to really enjoy it. Uh, you know, they liked getting together, being able to talk about things, getting pointers from other parents. And so I'm going to do this again this year via Zoom. Um, and the first one will be on October 1st. So you will be getting more information about that as well. And so I look forward to meeting you um, in a, maybe a smaller uh, event, but anyway, I, I look forward to seeing, and you can always call me. And so, and, and by all means, if you don't get any information or you don't, you don't know how to log in, uh, get your email address or how to log into um, Canvas, please um, contact me and I can also help get that information to you. Great, thank you, Carrie. I'm glad a parent night's already on the calendar. All right, any questions out there that were need to be answered in the chat or anybody want to unmute themselves and have an opportunity to ask a specific question? Hey, Rebecca, a parent had brought up the issue of or concern of Canvas with PowerSchool. Do they need to use both to track their students' progress and grades? Um, that's a really good question. I believe they would just be tracking on PowerSchool, but I'm not 100% certain at this time. So that would be, I could update that and, and make sure that's in the Grizzogram when I, when I have confirmation on that. But as far as I know, it would still be the same. We wanna try to keep things, the most familiar systems, people using the same systems. The most, so I would think that checking PowerSchool would be the, the best way to do that. Thank you, Maurice. Maurice. No problem. And then another parent had another issue, or not so much an issue, just a question as far as students connecting um, during lunch or break. Um, I, and I'm assuming the question is, can they use the same platform to connect with each other? Or do they have to do that outside? That's a really good question too. But I, ben, would you do you know about that? Like, do the I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm sorry. Um. Yeah. The parent had brought up. Um, a question as far as students connecting during their breaks. And I'm assuming the question was whether it was uh, using the platform itself. Like, can, oh. can Canvas be used for student to student contact? Like if they want to, you know, uh, chat or be on video time, hanging out, having social time. That's a really good question. Um, and I don't know that with certainty, but I don't believe that they can. I believe their communications are directly to their instructor, um, but that is one that we're going to need to follow up on and, and get a definite answer out in our Grizzogram. Thanks for that question. Mm -hmm. Ben, do you want to address a question about um, the seventh, the possibility of um, students taking a seventh class and how one might enroll? Yeah. Uh, Great question. So one of the things that we've uh, tried to do with our six period schedule is build in uh, some flexibility because we know that we're going to have those, um, those students that are really highly motivated. They want to challenge themselves and um, take more than six. And so what we're what we're offering is uh, basically they, they are not special classes. They're not additional classes. 
They're the same classes that we're offering in our, our regular bell schedule periods, one through six. Um, and it's just that if the teacher has availability within that class and the student wants to take it uh, above and beyond their six periods, we will uh, enroll them in the class. But basically the student would be, uh, parent and student would be acknowledging that they're just gonna be able to interact with the class um, and here comes the term again, asynchronously, uh, which means that it's gonna be outside of the student's regular uh, schedule. And so since everything, all of our courses this year are housed in Canvas and all of the assignments, lectures are gonna be recorded and posted on there. Um, we realized it was possible for students to really get all the course content that they need um, outside of that schedule. And so, we're gonna be offering that to students um, that really wanna do that. It will be semi-limited because it is based on space availability within that course. We can't go over the, the course uh, cap in terms of the maximum number of students in there. And we'll be uh, looking at making those kinds of schedule changes. Uh, Diane, I believe it's next week, right? We will. Yep. We'll be taking um, kind of those requests and going through a process where students and parents kind of understand the agreements um, that we kind of need and the expectations about those kind of unique virtual classes. Yeah. Yeah. And related to that, too, I think I saw earlier in the chat, there was a question about, um, you know, when am I going to be able to see my student's schedule? Um, and our goal is, I believe, by tomorrow afternoon or evening. Yeah, we, we absolutely want to have people take a look at schedules um, tomorrow afternoon or evening. Um, I think, as I said to the larger group yesterday, um, we can predict that there will still be schedules out there that students um, have decided maybe they want to kind of shift something or they may want to kind of move an elective or that kind of thing. And we will be working on those requests throughout the following week and hopefully have everything in place by the first day of school. Well, and I'd like to add that I, there are a few students who I will be reaching out to in regards to a seventh, um, seventh class. Be, be, anyway, and so, but please email me if you're interested in looking or talking more about that. And just to clarify too, that seventh class would be for credit and it would be for a regular grade. Um, there would just be no attendance taken because it's functioning kind of more like an independent study class. Yeah, and the, the, everything is due at the time the teacher has asked for it to be do, done. And, and so it, it is as if they were still part of the class and it'll end at the same time as every other class. Um, there was a question earlier too I saw um, that was kind of on the idea that if, if we have in-person instruction or, or we get to a point where a hybrid type schedule is possible, how much notice um, will we have of that happening before it actually happens? Um, and so I think the way I'd answer that is that um, we're probably looking at, and this is all based on um, state guidelines and, and what, the, what direction the district is ultimately going to go in, um, but we would look at, at phasing that in. So uh, kind of the first phase is um, what Rebecca talked about earlier in the presentation, is that there is a possibility that within distance learning, like we're in right now, that the state would allow us, if we met certain health and safety criteria in our in our area in terms of number of positive cases and things like that, um, that we could look at bringing um, a small number of uh, students on campus for some really focused uh, support. So these might be students that need you know, extra help with structure, organization, um, and they just need some extra tools in order to be successful with distance learning. That would probably be the, the first group of students we would look to bring on campus. Um, and then if conditions change remarkably from there, um, we would have to do some extra planning here on the campus in terms of 
making sure we have safety protocols and things like that before we would really scale up in any kind of larger way to have um, you know, a, a more robust student presence on campus. But that would be messaged to families um, weeks in advance, um, as much notice as possible. Uh, but that's, I'm kind of speaking hypothetically because, you know, none of us have been in this situation before and there's, there's no real pandemic playbook for how this is supposed to go. Um, but if we have any kind of situation where we're really gonna scale up, be able to scale up and have a large number of students on campus, it would take a, a lot of pre-planning on our part first. And during that process, we'd be messaging the parents about what the plan is. All right, great. Well, really appreciate everybody being here tonight. We had 77 participants. Um, as hard and as challenging as this year is gonna be, we're really trying to offer some normalcy and um, still having a lot of connection with the community and, and parents and listening and, and hearing from you. So we really appreciate you attending tonight and uh, getting your questions out there. And we hope that we were able to answer a lot for you and just let you know that we're really excited to try to bring you the best school year that we can. Yep, thank you all so much. You've all been really gracious and patient with us as we uh, figure this all out and um, just really want to share how much we, we appreciate you all being here tonight. Thank you. Have a great evening. Good night. See you on October 1st. <laughs>